Hi, this is Chris Blizzard uh, from the Mozilla Project. Um, I just wanted to take a, a few minutes of your time to walk you through some of the new capabilities that we're adding uh, to Firefox 3.1. Uh, this is largely targeted at developers, uh, web developers. Um, and to just give you an idea of some of the things that we're able to do once we start mixing uh, native video support in the browser with other web technologies uh, that uh, we're making available in 3.1. So uh, this is largely in response to uh, an article that was um, posted in Ars Technica uh, and a bunch of other blogs. Um, the video that was included there was uh, of me doing a demonstration, um, but I thought it might be better if we had a higher resolution version uh, that I could give you a, a quick demo for people that don't have Firefox 3.1 uh, Beta 2 or later, uh, or a, um, uh, a Firefox 3.1 Nightly, which has a lot of the capabilities you need to be able to do some of the demos. So let's jump in. Um, what you have in front of you here is uh, basically a uh, video that I took from the NASA archives uh, of a shuttle launch. Um, and what I've done is taken that video and taken data out of that video and give you a description of sort of what some of the telemetry around a launch is. Um, you can see here that basically we've got a video with a countdown timer. Um, up here we've got, although they aren't labeled, and I apologize for that, uh, this is basically a, a measurement of speed, this is a measurement of uh, altitude in miles, and this one is a, the distance downrange from the launch site in miles. So what I'm going to do is let this play for a couple minutes, or for, for 30 or 40 seconds, uh, just to give you a sense of sort of how it works. 10 seconds. We have a go for main engine start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery lighting up the nighttime sky as we continue building the International Space Station. Houston Discovery, roll program. Rendezvous with Discovery. Commander Mark Plasky confirming Discovery, rolling on course for a rendezvous with the International Space Station. Speed of 1,000 miles an hour, altitude one mile. Downrange four and a half miles from Kennedy Space Center already. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, obviously, you can see that it's going a thousand miles an hour, one point eight miles in altitude, um, you know, five miles downrange. So these are extrapolated data. It's not the actual data, um, just from the the video I was able to put together. Um, I want to give you a sense of sort of how this works as a web developer. Um, what we've done is try and make it really, really easy. Um, let me just use Firebug here to inspect, um, and obviously you can see there's a video element here. So I'll click on the video element. Um, there's a couple of attributes uh, label on the video. <coughs> the first is on can playthrough, which basically says call this function when uh, I've buffered enough to be able to play the video that says video can play through. It basically takes this button down here and turns it from a buffering to a start uh, and allows you to start the simulation. Uh, there's an on time update here, which basically calls video time update. Uh, all that does is uh, Anytime there's a new frame, it's called quite often, uh, it updates these canvas elements up here, uh, it updates this timer here, and basically lets the entire simulation run. So if we were to click this reset button, which I'll do at the end, you can see everything reset to the, the original state. Um, and obviously there's a source element here, which sort of stretches across two lines, which basically uh, gives a link to the Og Theora video, which drives the entire simulation. Um, these over here uh, obviously are canvas elements. If we click on them, you can see it's very simple, uh, basically little drawing elements. Um, and let's look uh, at the JavaScript for this real quick. Uh, the, um, the video time update function, which I mentioned before, which is called whenever there's a frame update, basically is very simple. It calls uh, on the video element, which is um, the element that's saved. There's a current time element, which tells you how many seconds you are into the video. Uh, that basically gets um, uh, calculated from the offset uh, from the launch time, so obviously it starts, you know, 12 seconds or so, or 11 seconds before uh, the actual launch takes place, and converts it to a fixed element, updates the time indicator, and uh, updates the text. So I'll point out that that element called time indicator is actually this element here, one will inspect, right here, and what you can see actually is that this is just uh, a div, right? It's just got a text with a div element on it, um, and it happens to be placed on top of the video using uh, uh, absolute positioning. So there's nothing really complicated about overlaying text or uh, a canvas element on top of a video. It's just another element, so it'll respond to events. You can use mouse over to do animations if you want using a canvas. It's pretty neat. Let me just show this to you as well. 
notice that the time down here is actually updating as well in Firebug while it's running. Very, very nice. So that's a really, really simple video of the kind of kind of very simple demonstration of the capabilities that you have when you're um, able to mix video with the elements around it. So let me give you a, a more interesting and complicated demonstration as well. Um, this is a movement tracker. This is actually done by uh, uh, somebody else in the Mozilla project. His name is Paul Roger. Uh, he's in Europe. He's well known for a bunch of his Zool uh, work in France. Um, so he put this video together, or this demonstration together, to be able to show off what happens when you're able to mix uh, video and uh, uh, some of the worker thread work that we have in Firefox 3.1, SVG, Canvas, all of these pieces together uh, to give you a demonstration. So this is going to change quite a bit when I actually uh, press the go button here. Um, but keep an eye on the video itself, which will play in the middle, and there will be a little uh, uh, graph here that will show uh, in one color horizontal movement, in one color uh, in, in uh, one color vertical movement, um, and over here, if you watch, here I'll start it. Je te dis quand t'arrêter. Watch here, and you can see actually changes in the video itself. Okay. Tu repasses devant et tu t'arrêtes euh, quand je te le dis. And on the video itself. Stop. Tu retournes devant la caméra. Bouge, bouge vraiment pas. Et bouge que que une des mains. So on the video yeah. itself, you can see areas where there's uh, movement in the video. So this is entirely done in the browser. Um, this is also sort of interesting because what you can do here is click and bring up uh, uh, Firebug again. Um, the really interesting thing here is that if you click and see, this is this is not this uh, this is not actually the video. This is a canvas. So what you're able to do in uh, uh, with canvas and video and all these things is uh, you're able to update the canvas with the data from the video. If you click on the video itself you can see it's actually has display none set on it so it's not visible. So what we do is we copy the data out of the video into a canvas and then what he's doing is calculating movement tracking between pixels uh, in individual frames in the canvas uh, using uh, in doing that calculation on threads so it's a very responsive application uh, that uh, still plays the video in real time um, and allows you to sort of take the graphics uh, the graphical information out of the video and do interesting things with it do overlays you could do overlays of different kinds of data this is one example just movement tracking um, and also the fact that I, I just like I mentioned it briefly but uh, he is using threads to do the calculation which means that uh, the heavy calculation that you need to be able to, to calculate the difference between an individual frame is done outside of the the uh, thread that the UI is running so it's an extremely responsive application uh, responsiveness is a very important thing for users and this is one of the reasons why we've been uh, adding uh, support for worker threads in JavaScript uh, to uh, Firefox 3.1 so uh, these are just a couple little demonstrations to hopefully uh, inspire people to realize what's possible when you start adding native video capabilities to the browser uh, and to the open web platform uh, and I hope it was informative for you. Thanks.